Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to show you an alternative method for making a user controlled slider. I just learned kind of a different way of doing it and I thought I would present it to you. So what we do is if you come here and you press one, click and you press one, we get this little thing that says press one to toggle slider. It toggles it off and on. And then we have our slider and you can click and drag it. And then two to update the value. And you'll see a print string updates the value. So it's not run off a tick. The method I saw was running off of a tick and I didn't think that was the best way to do it. So you can just update it when you want to update it by pressing the keyboard button. It can be a keyboard or a button or something like that. But you see every time I press it, it updates with it. So if I drag it all the way, it should be a thousand. So anyway, I'll show you how to do this. This isn't too hard and it's really useful. Okay, we're back and to get started on this, we're just gonna go into games and we're gonna go into blank template. And one thing that's kind of neat about this way is it's all in its own freestanding blueprint. There's just two things that we need to really create. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is go to window, load layout, default layout, and then we'll just go to the content drawer here and we'll dock it in the layout and we'll go to the content drawer level. And we don't even have to go into the first person template, but there is no first person template in here. So to get started with this, we're just gonna go ahead and right click and create a user widget here. And of course you can spend a lot of time on making these really nice. I'm just gonna leave it called new widget blueprint. And we'll go ahead and dock it up here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and get a canvas panel and drag this onto the scene like that. And we can stretch it out to, whoops, Stretch it out to 1920 by 1080. And then we're just gonna get a couple things here. So we're gonna go ahead and get some text elements. So, but let me get the, well, let me get these. I'll get text here and I'll get a text here and put it here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get one more. And these are just messages. So, so this one is just gonna say one the number one and this one is just going to set be the number a thousand so we'll put this to a thousand and then we can put these in horizontal boxes to make them neater and stuff like that but i'm not going to do that right now and this is just going to be a message to the user saying press one to toggle slider press two to update and that's all that's going to say and we can just leave that there and then lastly we'll get going to go ahead and get a slider and drag this on to right underneath these and then we'll just stretch that out to maybe we can like i said you can fine tune these later if you want i'm just hitting the arrow keys there it doesn't have to be perfect just the general idea and then i noticed on this slider if you come down here under i said advanced there's one here for on the slider, looking for it. Style, I believe it is. It is bar thickness. You can actually inc make it a little bit thicker, the bar a little bit thicker. So I think that's better that way. There's some other adjustments on here you can play around with, but that's basically it. And we just wanna make sure that our slider is set to a variable. And it's called slider zero, and we can just call this my slider so we're sure we made it and that's the one we made okay and we'll hit compile and save and believe it or not that's all we have to do in here and everything else we're going to do in a blueprint that's kind of what i like about this particular way of doing it but anyway we're going to come up to blueprint class and we're going to go actor and we're going to call this bp underscore slider just like that and we'll go ahead and double click it and we don't need to do anything in the viewport. Everything we're going to do is in the event graph. And this is going to be driven off of uh, an event play. And there's one, some nodes in here that I didn't really was familiar with. And I realized that really this is kind of a nifty, nifty way of building a slider. So anyway, off the event begin play, the first thing we're going to do is enable input. So we drag off of here and we just go enable input right there like that. 
And we do need to get the player controller, so we gotta go get player controller. And that goes in there like that. And then the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and we can create our widget. Create widget like that. And we'll link it to our new widget blueprint right there. And then this is kind of the, the cool thing is that we can create, turn this into basically an object reference variable if we right click on it and go promote to variable. And we can name this widget. So this creates a line of communication between the widget and this blueprint. And then we can access values off of the slider. And then off of here, we can go ahead and add to the viewport. So we add it to the viewport right there. And we link this one in here like that. And then after that, what do we want to do? Then this is just up to you. I mean, but we could disable the, the visibility of it, but it's going to, I think it's better if the, the menu appears first because it has the instructions on what to do. So we could hide the menu, the slider, but we're not going to. We want it to appear with the instructions. So we're not going to hide its visibility there. And that's just the first set. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the visibility and the control for our slider based on a keyboard press. So we're going to right click and go keyboard one. And then off of here, we're just going to get a flip flop node. So search for a flip flop node here like this and go ahead and wire that in. And here's where we're going to toggle off and on the visibility of our widget. And what's cool is that we've got this reference right over here. So, oh, I can make this instance editable too. So let me compile and save all that. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto the scene, get widget, and then I can set its visibility. So if I drag off of here, I can go set visibility right like that. And we want it to, so on the, it's going to come in this way. So when we hit one for the first time, we actually want it to go to hidden. Okay. And then we're going to right click, not right click. We're going to hit control D and duplicate this one. And then when we click the widget again, we want it to go to visible like that. So the slider is going to come on visible, but if we hit one, we're going to turn it off. So that's what we're going to do. And since we're doing this right now, we can go ahead, since we're going to do this off of an event begin play, I just realized that what we can do is we're going to need to set UI to game and UI mode right here. And we're going to need to get the player controller again too, so that we will be able to interact with our widget there. So we'll go ahead and get player controller and pop this in here like that. Okay. So then we don't need to mess with that later. Once that's set, that's kind of set. And then the last thing we're going to do is just toggle off and on the mouse cursor. So we want to get the, we have the player controller up here. We can just drag off of it and we can go set show mouse cursor. And when we go hit and we don't want to be able to see it. So we just pop that in there. And we can hit control D and duplicate this and then just do the opposite. When we turn it on, we want to be able to see the mouse cursor. So then there's that. And then the last thing is going to be kind of the main reason I wanted to do this tutorial is on this functionality is once we have this widget, I didn't realize we could go ahead and access the slider itself. So we can actually go get slider, my slider, I think I would call it get my slider right here and once we do this then we can get the value of what the slider is so if you drag off here i can actually go get value of the slider and i actually didn't know <laughs> that there was this option to get the value like that so what we're going to do is right click and get a keyboard for number two and this will update our value so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create one variable here and we're just going to call this value. I'll just call it slider value. And we're going to set it as a float 
right here. We can make it instance editable. Oh, I have to put the target in here. I didn't put the target in there. And this player controller in here. Sorry about that. Compile and save. Okay, so then we got this one, and then all we have to do is drag it on and go set the value. And then this value, we're just going to pop it into here like that. And then we're going to put this in there like that. To confirm what our values are, just for our purposes, the user may or may not need to see the values because they'll have that, that scale reference of 1 to 1,000. We're just going to print out a string so we can see. So we'll just go print string like that. And then we'll just pop this in there like that. And that's the whole thing. And then this value over here, similar to the last tutorial I just did, this slider value can then be used to update other functions or nodes you might have, whatever you're trying to control numerically with those values. So the whole thing kind of looks like this. Let me get rid of these two nodes, kind of crowding up the screen. And you can rearrange these nodes in different patterns if it makes more sense to you. But that's basically the whole system right there. So let's go ahead and compile and save that. And we'll go in here and we'll drag it onto the scene. And as soon as we do, and I hit play, we should see the menu pop up. And there's our menu, one from a thousand. And then I have press one to toggle slider. So I press one, it goes off, on, off, on, off, on. And if I click and drag, and I hit two, you'll see the updated value right there. Although I'm noticing one thing I didn't do is I need to come into the new widget blueprint and here on the max value, I need to set it to a thousand. And then if I hit compile and save, it'll go from those values from zero to a thousand. So now we come back and I hit play. And I could have a button here instead of the keyboard function, but right now I just have I just have I'm doing it with the keyboard. So but we have the instructions down here. So we press one to toggle off and on the slider. And then we can drag the slider here. And then if I hit two, you'll see the it's 450, that's the updated value. I drag it over here, it's 671. And over here, it's 803. So just a really good thing to know and be able to use. And I hope you found this helpful. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time.